Hello everybody, Ouija here, and let's talk about Ice Queendom Episode 10, Mirror of Darkness. Episode 10 opens up with Blake and Yang in the mansion, where we get to hear what Blake's plan is, which is to let the other Nightmare possess her, as the only thing strong enough to contend with Nightmare Weiss would be another Nightmare. Normally, Nightmares won't fight each other though, but she figures that since the White Fang and the Shinee family are mirrors of each other, that there's a mirror of this place in her Nightmare. And she can use that to bring the Fauna Suppression over, to get them to fight. All of this is to force Weiss to come face to face with the fact that her and Blake are mirrors of each other. That they are friends and equals, so that they can cancel each other out. But not only is it to force Weiss to overcome her hesitation to accept her, it's also Blake's way of getting over her own prejudice against Weiss and the Shneese. So if you have watched my other videos, you'll note that I am a big fan of this arc. That they have between these two, with them both having to go over these prejudices that they have towards each other. To let go of the anger that they hold for the White Fang and the Shinee Dust Company respectively. I'm a big fan of them exploring Blake's side of this especially, as it's not something that was explored in the original show, which is what side shows like this should do. Instead of exploring things we already know, they should explore aspects of the characters and world that haven't been explored yet, or just weren't explored deeply enough like Blake's hate for the Shinidesk Company and Weiss's hate for the White Fang, which we still haven't gotten the exact reason for, which I hope is coming up in the next two episodes. Also, I like how they get on Ruby's case for being too reckless with her plans, but then here's Blake coming up with the most reckless plan in the show. I mean, she's purposely letting a grim infect her. I like this though, maybe it's showing that Ruby's already had an effect on her teammates. Whether it's a positive one, well that's up to you. Back to the scene and Yang is against this idea, afraid that she will lose herself to the nightmare, which Blake says is the plan, that it needs to be done so they can save Weiss. They then call Xion to see if it is even possible, which she says while well, yes it is possible it is extremely risky, but Weiss doesn't have much time left so the plan is set. Blake will willingly let herself get infected. During this whole scene, Team Juniper are having a conversation with Xion, where we learn some of the limitations of Xion's semblance mainly that she can only send so many people into the dream world. So there's the reason why the rest of Team Juniper didn't go in. It makes sense, if there was like 8 of them this would probably be way too easy, but it still sucks. We also got a reference to Ren Semblance here. We are almost at the end of the season, so here's a good moment to mention this. I love all the inside references that they make that you would only understand if you've seen the original show. It really lets you know that the creators of this show are fans of the franchise. Also it's really fun to try and find all the small references hidden throughout the show. It was nice to have a moment with Ren and Nora. I really liked both of them, so any scene with them is great. Back to the show again, and Xion guides the Nightmare Grim to Blake in a really cool looking scene. I love the way that her weapon threads and flows, making sure the Nightmare Grim winds up where it is supposed to. After the Grim infects Blake, we go back to the dream world, where Yang breaks out of the mansion with the relic. Before we cut back to Blake, where the Nightmare infection has begun, though instead of seeing herself like Xion and Weiss did, she sees Adam. So it turns out I was wrong, the mask she is wearing is in fact Adam's, though for some reason it's not the mask that he was wearing in the beginning of the show, nor is it the mask from the original show. I don't know why they decided to change the mask for this scene, maybe they wanted Blake to have a mask distinct from Adam's regular mask, probably so they can sell merchandise with a little less controversy, than with the Adam and Blake shirt they released. This does leave the question as to why, unlike the other two, Blake didn't see herself. Well. In a way, though, I guess she did. Adam is who Blake fears she will become, if she were to continue down that road with the White Fang. He is a reflection of what she could have become. The Nightmare Grim uses what you are most afraid of. For Jean, it was his family's legacy, represented by himself. For Weiss, it was her inability to change and the pressure that her family put on her. Her biggest enemy, as well, was herself. For Blake, her biggest fear is becoming Adam, of becoming consumed by hate and malice like he did. So the Nightmare takes that form. With Nightmare Grim consuming her, the dream world begins to mix, and we get this crimson railroad that the White Fang and Blake travel down. Before the scene ends, we get this wicked shot of Blake consumed by this black and red energy, where she declares that she will bury the Shinee family. The hate and malice that she has kept inside her for the Shinees has been released, and has found a target in the air of the Shinee Desk Company. Then we cut to Blake, who has somehow found their bike. Like, seriously, where did they come from? Who is making her way back to Jean and crew. She's actually almost attacked by Blake's nightmare, but is saved by Jean's coat. And just like that, Jean has been more used in this season than Yang has. Or Yang. This isn't an insult on Jean though, it's more of a statement on how the show has treated Yang. Then we cut to Weiss who is surprised by the sudden appearance of the White Fang, before Blake shows up. 
and attacks her. An interesting detail here is Blake's weapons. One of them seems to be a distorted version of Adam's rifle katana, the other is a saw-like blade. It actually kind of reminds me of the weapon that the lieutenant used in season 2. Weiss is surprised by Blake's appearance, telling her to take off the costume. Blake tells her it's not a costume. The majority of the rest of the episode is a back and forth conversation between Blake and Weiss about the Faunus, with Blake throwing all of her anger about the Shnees, treatment of the Faunus, at Weiss while they are fighting, saying that she will enact their own justice for all the things that the humans have done to the Faunus. We are seeing all of our emotions, all of the rage that Blake has felt towards humans and their treatment towards the Faunus come to the forefront. We are seeing Blake become Adam, and on the other side, we are seeing Weiss's reaction to all this hate. Throughout this fight, we see Weiss being put on the back foot. At first, this annoyed me. I was like, damn, they really are going to do Weiss dirty in her own show, as well. Her nightmare is somehow weaker than Blake's. But then she says something that made me realize that she isn't fighting Blake at her full strength, because she is afraid to hurt Blake. Because she actually cares about Blake. Blake has actually succeeded in her plan, as Weiss, towards the end of the fight, admits that she doesn't hate all the funs. This fight scene was great. It really explored the depths of emotions that Blake has been holding in. Like I said earlier in this video, we get to see more of the emotions and the process that Blake has had to go through mentally to get over her own prejudices. We also finally get to see Wyatt start to come to terms with her own feelings on the Faunus. That she doesn't actually hate the Faunus as a whole, but just the White Fang, which honestly is fine. With what her experiences with the White Fang are, it's no surprise that she has no love lost for the organization. And if my theory is right about what happened to her grandfather, that would be even more reason for her not to like the White Fang. Basically, what this all means is that they are one step closer to saving Weiss, as she is now going through the change that she has been so afraid to accept. Towards the end of the fight scene, Weiss says that she will rid Blake of that mask and render final judgment on her, which is eternal sleep. This is an important scene for two reasons, as it means Weiss has for sure separated Blake from the White Fang in her mind as she sees this White Fang version of Blake as a sort of fake. Two, she has deemed Blake worthy of entering eternal sleep which, as we know, is only for those people worthy of being in the Shni Empire. So Weiss now sees Blake Ivanis as an equal amongst the rest of her subjects, which include Ruby and Yang. In between this fight, we have a scene where the tiny Weisses engage the Jacques Knight in a fight, with Jean seeing his giant sword to the side. So the next episode will likely see Jean, with the help of the tiny Weisses, defeat Jacques. And honestly, if it does go that way, I can't imagine a better scenario than Weiss's childhood desires slaying her father, the one who forced her to lock those desires up in the first place. We also see Ruby and Yang come up with a plan. Yang will engage the statue while Ruby gets inside the palace to fight and kill the grip. Then we get this really cool looking scene with Yang fighting the statue on her motorcycle. Again, this show puts some emphasis on a part of a character that isn't brought up much. In this case, Yang's more gearhead thrill-seeking side, which has been lost in the shuffle of her character after volume 3. I love the way that they animated the motorcycle moving and avoiding the statue. It gave me that Final Fantasy VII vibes when you fight the other soldier on the motorcycle in the remake. The episode ends with Ruby about to fight the Nightmare. So the next episode will probably solely be fighting, with the fights being Yang vs. the Nicholas statue, Ruby vs. the Nightmare, Jean and the Tiny Weisses vs. Jacques, and finally Weiss vs. Blake. Which honestly, and I don't know if this is horrible of me, I'm hoping Weiss' Nightmare version wins before Ruby kills the Grim, freeing her. How sad it would be if Weiss lost her fight in their own show. I wonder if Blake's nightmare is going to be the final villain though, like after Ruby kills the nightmare and normal Weiss has to fight Blake to free her from the nightmare's grasp. It's unlikely, but it would be cool. Also with Blake getting infected, that means Yang is the only member of Team Ruby not to be infected. Does that say something about Yang's importance to the show? Maybe. This was an episode of two parts. The first part was focused on the final step towards the reconciliation of Blake and Weiss's relationship, with Blake coming to terms with her own feelings and biases on the Shni Desk Company, and us seeing Weiss finally admit that she doesn't hate all of the Faunus, that she sees Blake for who she is, not what she is. All that is left for them to do is to cap it off, to stick the landing, and have them have a real heart-to-heart -heart moment where they finally accept one another's feelings. This relationship arc has been one of the best things in this show. Seeing Blake and Weiss slowly start to accept that they aren't so different has been great, and it's been especially cool to get Blake's perspective on this character development. The second part of this episode was the start of all the fights that we will be getting in the final dream episode, as the final episode will likely be some sort of epilogue. And they seem like they're going to be epic. I hope they save enough budget for them. I guess in a lot of ways, this episode was another setup episode with the way it ended. There's really not much else to say about this episode, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
Honestly, it means that they have done a good job following through with most of their setup. So there's not much to count on that I haven't already done. I think overall I'd give this episode an 8 out of 10. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. Tell me what you thought about the episode in the comments below and thanks for watching. Ouija out.